Hi everyone, my name is Mel and I'm the author of the young adult magical realism novel Leaving Wishville. I have read so many blog articles and watched so many YouTube videos of authors giving their advice to others on what works and doesn't work for writing a story. And a lot of these tips just really aren't true. So today I'm going to be exposing five common writing myths. Number one, you can write a book in 30 days. There's a challenge called NaNoWriMo, which is held every November, and it's a challenge to write 50,000 words in one month. That's actually the challenge that I used to write the first draft of Leaving Wishville in November of 2017. A lot of people who don't have much experience with writing and are just getting started may go into NaNoWriMo thinking that at the end of the month they're going to have a book. But that's not true. You can't write a book in 30 days, but you can write a first draft. I suppose it's possible for someone to complete an entire novel in 30 days, edited and all, but it's just not realistic. After you write that first draft, you're going to want to do several rounds of editing, probably find beta readers, maybe a professional editor, and so there's a lot of steps you have to go through before you actually have a finished book. In my case, I wrote the first draft of Leaving Wishville in November of 2017, and then I spent nearly two years editing the book afterwards. So it was a really long process, and I wouldn't say that I wrote the book in November, because that's not really true. There was so much writing that I did after November, like adding new scenes that I needed and rewriting parts that weren't working well. That first draft that you get out of NaNoWriMo, it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be up to par with a fully edited book, because it's not. You're there to write a first draft and so it doesn't need to be perfect. When I go into NaNoWriMo, I already know ahead of time that what I'm going to get at the end of the month is not going to be great and it kind of sucks because you're, you're spending an entire month fully dedicated to writing a book and maybe at the end of the month you don't like what you have and that can be a little discouraging but the whole point of NaNoWriMo is for you to just get the words down and get started. Number two, you have to plot your story to write it well. You've probably seen a lot of YouTube videos of authors pushing you to download their story templates and their character outlines. They're doing this because those things work for them, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. Yes, Levi? Hello. I'm making a YouTube oh. video. Okay. Okay. I've tried out so many different plotting outlines. Some of them I kind of like, some of them I don't. My personal favorites are Blake Snyder's Sweet Sheet, and the three-act story structure. I definitely understand why plotting is an important thing because it helps you be more efficient with your writing. If you plot your story before you start writing it, there's a bigger chance that you probably won't have to edit as much as someone who just you know, opened up a document and got started. Plotting makes the editing process a lot simpler because you're following an outline. It makes writing more efficient but that doesn't mean that it's going to work for everyone and that doesn't mean that you have to do it to write a good story. Even if you don't plot a story beforehand, you can still work on making the structure better during the editing process. There's authors out there who have figured out a formula that works really, really well for them. That doesn't mean that you have to follow that exact same way of plotting. My advice is to experiment with different types of plotting, experiment with not plotting that much, and just see what you enjoy most. Because at the end of the day, you're writing because you enjoy it, and if the idea of plotting a novel is stopping you from actually pushing through and starting to write your story, just start writing. Don't let all of these rules like you have to plot your story or you have to plan out all your characters stop you from getting started. Number three, you have to have a professional editor. Now before you start hating on me for this opinion, let me say that I did have professional editors on Leaving Wishville. Not the entire story, but for certain sections. And although their feedback was really helpful, I didn't feel it was necessary for the entire story. But what I did feel was necessary was beta readers. If you finished writing your story and you've done several rounds of editing, but nobody besides you has ever read your work, then I think in that case it may be necessary to have a professional editor to tell you what you need to fix. But if you've done rounds of beta reading and several people have read your story and you reach a point where a lot of people are actually really enjoying your story, then I don't think it's necessary for you to get a professional editor. If you're planning to go through a self-publishing route, it does make a lot of financial sense to forgo the editor and save that money for people who can manage the cover design and distribution fees, stuff like that. There's a lot of money that goes into publishing a book and having a professional editor 
editor is just a huge, huge chunk of that. Of course, there's going to be people out there who can help you improve the writing style to be the best that it can be, but does it really make too much of a difference? Don't kill me, don't kill me, but does it really make too much of a difference? I don't think that you need to have someone come in and tell you, you know, these little things that you can change to make it even better. Of course, that's going to improve your story and the writing itself, but there's nothing wrong with keeping the writing exactly how it is now. At least that's what I personally believe. A copy editor might look at Leaving Wishville and say that it's not perfect enough, that there's so many things that could be fixed to make the writing stronger. But at what point do you stop aiming for perfection and just be satisfied with where your story is? I know there's going to be people out there who disagree with my thoughts on this. Maybe you've had an amazing developmental editor and you feel like everybody needs one because it's just benefited your story so much. I just wanted to put my opinion out there for those of you who are maybe skeptical of getting a professional editor for your book. I truly believe that it is possible to publish an amazing story without a professional editor having helped you through it. Number four, to write well, read more. This is one of the biggest writing advice tips ever. You'll hear it so many times. To become a great writer, you have to be a reader, right? I somewhat disagree. And here's why. I obviously enjoy making videos, which is why I'm doing this right now. I've watched a lot of videos for tips on finding your video editing style and getting started on YouTube. And one of the biggest tips is to stop watching too many YouTube videos and stop imitating too many people. The more videos you watch, the more you start to subconsciously pick up on these different styles. Those sort of get implemented in your own work. This is the same with writing. I think that it's perfectly fine to read and get inspiration from other people, but I don't think that you need to be reading a ton because you can still develop your own writing style without having to experience a ton of other people's writing styles. I started out reading a lot when I was younger and that's sort of what got me onto the path of writing. But when I started writing, I didn't really read as much. If I had been reading a lot while I was writing, I think my writing definitely would have been influenced by that. Whether or not that would be in a good way, I don't know. But I'm very, very happy with how my writing has turned out. I know a lot of people are a little insecure about their writing style and I've always wondered why I've been so confident with mine and I think it really comes down to the fact that I didn't read too much while I was writing. I wasn't always comparing myself to other people's work, I was just focusing on making my writing better and I think that's really helped me. If you really like to write but you don't read too much, I honestly think that's okay. Reading, of course, is very helpful, you know, improves your vocabulary, sort of gets you familiar with the flow of writing, but I don't think you need to be reading extra, extra, extra all the time in order to become a good writer. I think what's helped me most with my writing has been writing, not reading. And finally, our last writing myth, number five. If you're experiencing writer's block, you need to take a break. I don't think this is true. The reason why is because if I took a break every single time I had writer's block, I would be taking a break all the time. I would not be writing. There's sort of this mentality in the writer's community that you need to take a break from writing, you need to relax. And I think that's totally true. You do need to take breaks. But if you want to finish your story, you also have to be really motivated to just get through it and to finish. And you, of course, have to listen to writer's block and take a break when you need it. But if you get in the habit of just stopping whenever you feel a little bit stuck, you're going to be stuck for a long time. There are times when I sit down in front of the computer and I just feel stuck, but all it takes is a little bit of motivation and willpower to get me back into the writing zone. Sometimes I'll be working on editing my story and I get to this part that's just so hard and I can't figure it out no matter how hard I try. So I'll take a break and then out of nowhere the idea just hits me and it fixes all my problems. But honestly, for the majority of the time, that break doesn't work. It's just a form of procrastination from facing that issue that I have to face. I know that I can't keep editing my book until I figure out what to do with that one plot element, but I just don't want to try. When you take breaks, it's really easy to make that a habit. It's really easy to get in the habit of just, you know, sitting down at the computer, feeling a little stuck and thinking, oh, you know, that's, that's just because I need a break. I think you have to be really careful in understanding why you want to take a break. 
do you want to take a break because you're honestly exhausted and you know you've tried to push through writing and it's not working for you that's fine or do you want to take a break because you just don't want to deal with the writing you're just feeling kind of stuck and you're feeling demotivated and you just don't believe in your story and maybe you're thinking about starting a new project really evaluate why you want to take a break and if that's a good reason to do so I did mention that I try to push myself through writer's block so I thought I'd share some of the ways that have been beneficial for me one of the things that I do is create Pinterest boards for all of my characters and all of my settings that has been something that's really fun another thing I've done is create Spotify playlists which I did for Leaving Wishville of course don't get too into this stuff because it can turn into a form of procrastination as well you know you work on the Pinterest boards and the Spotify instead of actually writing the book but most of the time it really helps me get back into the writing mode sometimes I'll also read over my favorite part of the story so far you know that one scene that I just really loved writing and I love to read I'll just reread it to try to feel more motivated long story short taking breaks from writing is okay but make sure you're doing it at the right time and for the right reasons so that concludes our five writing myths video a lot of people have requested writing related content from me and so i thought i'd finally make a video with some more tips and advice hopefully this was helpful and if it was please be sure to give this video a like thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time